All right, so this is about to be my, oh gosh, maybe fifth attempt at the second part of section 2.2. I've had some computer issues and then just I've made mistakes. It's been not good. So let me jump into it. Hopefully I get something that's decent this time. The second part of this video involves finding the derivative of a fraction. There's a problem or two towards the end of this section that we might skip. I'll tell you when we get to them if I'm going to skip them because they're really messy and they're not terribly important. Um, if, I, if we said we had y is equal to some fraction that has a numerator and a denominator, you know, it has a numerator and a denominator, then y prime is going to equal to the denominator. How about this? We're saying it's going to equal to the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. I won't be able to fit the whole word numerator, but that's close enough all over the denominator squared. And this is an or squared. So that's the formula for the derivative of a fraction. In the, it has, it, the derivative of a fraction is a fraction. In the numerator, there's a minus sign. And on the left side of the minus sign, you have the derivative of the numerator times the, the denominator. On the right side of the minus sign, you have the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared. This is technically what I have written above called the quotient rule. When you're taking the derivative of a fraction, you use the quotient rule. And the formal definition of the quotient rule is probably more impressive than it actually is. It says if you have, the quotient rule says if you have a fraction that is a, has a function in the numerator and the denominator, then the derivative of that fraction can be found by taking the derivative of the numerator, f prime of x, times the, the denominator, g of x, minus the derivative of the denominator, g prime of x, times the numerator, f of x, all over the denominator squared. And this is symbolically with function notation the same thing as what I have written above. So now I'm going to try to um, apply this version of the rule, which is easier to follow, to some pro homework problems. And the first two homework problems that we'll need to worry about in this grouping are 15 and 16. And so I'm going to find the derivative of 16. I'm going to write g prime of x equals, and I'm going to make a fraction with a minus sign. To the left of that minus sign, the first thing I'm going to need is the derivative of the numerator. So the very first thing I'm going to need to find is the derivative of the numerator 7x minus 4. That involves taking the derivative of 7x and the derivative of minus 4. The derivative of 7x is 7, and the derivative of minus 4 is 0. So the derivative of 7x minus 4 is just 7. That's the first thing that I'm going to write in the numerator. And next to that, I'm going to write the denominator, just how it was given to me. And the denominator, just how it was given to me, was 7x plus 11. Then I have my minus sign. The first thing I write after my minus sign is the derivative of the denominator. So I'm going to need to find the derivative of 3x plus 11. I'm going to put it in a parenthesis, although it doesn't really need to be in a parenthesis. The derivative of 3x is 3. The derivative of positive 11 is 0. So the derivative of 3x plus 11 is just 3. The derivative of 7x minus 4 was 7. 
Next to the derivative of the denominator, I put the entire numerator. So the rule that I had written, the numerator is the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, how it was written in the problem, minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator, how it was written in the problem, all over, in parentheses, the denominator squared. So this is the entire derivative of the problem in number 16. When we simplify derivatives of fractions, we generally never multiply out the denominator. So as I go to simplify this, I'm going to leave the denominator 3x plus 11 quantity squared. We generally, when we're finding the derivative of a fraction, we multiply out the two halves of the numerator and combine like terms. And so that's what I'm going to do next to simplify this. I'm going to multiply the 7 times 3x and get 21x. I'm going to multiply the 7 by the positive 11 and get positive 77. And I'm going to consider this a minus 3. I'm going to multiply minus 3 times 7x and get minus 21x and minus 3 times minus 4 and get plus 12. I'm almost done. In my numerator, the 21x and negative 21x will cancel. I'm just going to add 77 and 12 and get 89. And this is going to give me the answer to problem 16. I'm going to get g prime of x equals to 89 over the quantity 3x plus 11 squared. And this is one of two problems that I'm going to need for the last grouping of problems. When you do problem 15, you're going to need that answer for problem 39. So I'm going to write this answer to problem, 40, to problem 16 when I, um, I'm going to write it next to problem 40. So when I go to do problem 40, e either at the end of this video or the beginning of the next video, I'm going to have that handy. So when you do your problem 15, you're going to need the answer for problem 15 when you do problem 39. So you might want to just keep it handy if you don't have problem 39 in front of you. All right, so that's 15 and 16. Hopefully you did 15, as I just did my 16. Now we're going to move on and do 17 and 18 have y's as opposed to g's that hardly matters. I'm going to write y prime and the, make a fraction with a minus sign in the numerator. And the very first thing I need to write is the derivative of the numerator. So I need to take the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of 12x is just 12. And I'm going to write that down. Hopefully, me doing those derivatives in my head are, aren't messing you up. To do the derivative of 12x, you consider it 12x to the first. You multiply the exponent 1 by the 12. You lower the exponent to 0. Then you're going to have 1 times 12, which is 12, times x to the 0, and x to the 0 is 1. So you get 12 times 1, which is 12. In the, so that's the first thing I write for any derivative of the fraction is the derivative of my numerator and then now I'm going to multiply by the denominator and the denominator is 3x minus 6. Then I have a minus sign and after the minus sign I need to write the derivative of the denominator. So that's going to be the derivative of 3x minus 6. That's the first thing that's going to follow the minus sign. I can put it in a parenthesis, but the parenthesis isn't often necessary. The derivative of 3x is 3, the derivative of minus 6 is 0. So that's the first thing I write after the minus sign is the derivative of the denominator. After that I write the numerator, and the numerator is 12x. That finishes up my numerator. The derivative of the denom numerator times the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator all over the denominator squared and I always leave the denominator with its parentheses. Now I'm just going to clear the parentheses and combine like terms. I'm going to go 12 times 3x and get 36x and 12 times minus 6 and get minus 72 and then minus 3 times 12x is minus 36x and that's going to leave me with minus 72 in the numerator because the 36 x's will cancel. And the denominator is going to be 3x minus 6 quantity squared. So I'm almost at my answer. I cancel out the minus 36 and positive 36 x. And I'm going to get the derivative of the function that's given to me in problem 18. is going to have a minus 72 in the numerator 
and then the quantity 3x minus 6 squared in the denominator. This is the last answer that I'm going to need in the future and for this section. So when I go to do problem 42, I need to have this derivative handy. And this derivative is minus 72 over 3x minus 6 quantity squared. When you go to do problem 17, you're going to need that answer when you do 41. So you might want to keep it handy. All right, so you should give 17 a go. And like I said, keep that answer handy for when you do problem 41. All right, so I'll move into number 20. And you can try number 19. So y prime, the first thing I'm going to write is a fraction with a minus sign. And the first thing that I'm going to write in the numerator of my fraction is the derivative of the numerator. That's the, the derivative of 3t squared minus t. For the 3t squared to do its derivative, you go 2 times 3 is 6. Lower the exponent from 2 to 1. You get 6t to the first. You don't have to write that one. And then the derivative of the minus t, that's really the derivative of minus 1t to the first. I'm going to bring down the 1 for the exponent multiplied by the coefficient of minus 1. Lower the exponent to from 1 to 0. You get 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, times t to the 0, which is also equal to 1. So the derivative of minus t is minus 1. The derivative of 6t squ 3t squared minus t is 6t minus 1. That's the first thing that goes in my numerator, the derivative of the numerator. And then I write the entire denominator in a parentheses after it. The entire denominator is 5 plus 4t. After my minus sign, the first thing I write is the derivative of my denominator. So I'm gonna after that minus sign, I'm going to have to write the derivative of 5 plus 4t. The 5, because it doesn't have a variable, it's a constant. It has a derivative of 0. 4t has a derivative of 4. And then after that, I write the whole numerator, which is 3t squared minus t. This 4 I doesn't have to be in a parentheses, but it can be in a parentheses. So that's the derivative of the numerator times the, the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator. And then I finish it off by all over the denominator squared. So that's the entire derivative. Now I just need to simplify it by clearing the parentheses and combining like terms in the numerator. And I'm going to leave the denominator completely as it was given to me, 5 plus 4t squared, quantity squared. So this part of the numerator I'm going to have to foil. First, 6t times 5 are 30t, 6t times 4t, plus 24t squared, negative 1 times 5, which is minus 5, negative 1 times 4t is minus 4t. The next parentheses in the numerator, I'm going to go minus 4 times 3t squared, which is minus 12t squared, and minus 4 times minus t is positive 4t. Now I'm going to combine like terms in my numerator. So the like terms I'm going to need to combine first are the 24t squared minus 12t squared. And when I combine those, I just go 24 minus 12 and get positive 12. And I keep the t squared. The other terms I'm going to combine are the positive 30t, the minus 4t, and the positive 4t. When I combine those three terms that I just circled, the 4t's are opposites, they cancel. I'm going to be left with the plus 30t. The only thing that I didn't circle in the numerator needs to be part of my numerator. And I'm going to write it last in my answer, the minus 5 in the numerator, last that is. And then I'm going to keep the denominator 5 plus 4t squared, quantity squared. And generally, if all I'm asked to do is find the derivative of a fraction, I usually don't take the time to try to factor out the numerator, even if it happens to factor. So I'm going to leave my answer just like that. Um, there is a the outside chance that the um, numerator does factor, but I doubt that it does. That looks pretty prime to me. And even if it does factor, I'm going to leave it. I don't need that answer for any time in the future, so I'm just going to leave that answer there, and you can give problem 19 a crack. I'm going to move on and do problem 22, and you can try 21. So for 22, I'm going to write g prime of x. I'm going to make a fraction with a minus sign. 
the first thing I'm going to get is the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of 5x squared plus 3x is going to be the first thing that I write in the numerator. The derivative of 5x squared is 10x. The derivative of positive 3x is positive 3. After the derivative of the numerator, I write the entire denominator. In this case, that's x minus 2. That's the first part of my new derivative. Derivative of the numerator times the, the denominator, and now minus, and then I'm going to need the derivative of the denominator. This is a really nice derivative. The derivative of x minus 2 is just 1. The derivative of minus 2 is 0. The derivative of x, that's really the derivative of 1x to the first. I multiply the exponent 1 times the coefficient 1, lower the exponent by 1, you get x to the 0, and x to the 0 is, is 1. So the derivative of just a plain x is a 1. The derivative of minus 2 is 0. And that's the first thing that follows the minus sign is the derivative of the denominator. And then I'm going to multiply by the entire numerator, which is 5x squared plus 3x and then all over the denominator squared. You might want to cancel those. You can't cancel those because of the minus between the x minus 2 factor, the piece that has the x minus 2 factor. You can't cancel those. Now I'm going to simplify by clearing the parentheses in the numerator. First set of parentheses I need to FOIL. So I'm going to go first, 10x times x is 10x squared. 10x times minus 2 is minus 20x. Inners, 3 times x is plus 3x. Last, 3 times 2 is minus 6. And then for my next parentheses, I'm going to multiply minus 1 times 5x squared and get minus 5x squared, and minus 1 times positive 3x and get minus 3x. And then when I'm simplifying the derivative of a fraction, I always leave the denominator in a parentheses with the squares. Now I'm going to combine like terms in the numerator. Specifically, I'm going to take this 10x squared and subtract that, positive, my, that 5x squared and get 5x squared. And then I'm going to combine this minus 20x, this positive 3x, and that minus 3x's. The 3x and the, the positive and negative 3x cancel, so I'm left with a minus 20x. And the item that I didn't circle doesn't combine with anything, but it needs to be part of my numerator, so I'll bring the minus 6 down and leave it in my numerator. And then I'm going to leave the denominator x minus 2 quantity squared. That fraction, I doubt, reduces. The only way it could possibly reduce is if the numerator factored and there was a factor of x minus 2 that would cancel with the denominator. So that's a perfect answer for 22. Not going to go any further. You can give 21 a go. It should be real similar because our problems are similar. Yours looks a little bit easier than mine. All right, now for 23 and 24. That's much messier, but I'm going to deal with them. So for 24, I'm going to go k prime of t equals a fraction with a minus sign. The first thing that I'm going to write in the numerator is the derivative of 3t squared plus t minus 2. The derivative of 3t squared is 6t to the first. The derivative of plus t is plus 1 the derivative of minus 2 is 0. So there's the derivative of my numerator. I multiply that by the entire denominator unchanged. So the left half of my numerator is going to be 6t plus 1, the derivative of the numerator, times the denominator. Then I have my minus sign, and the first thing I'm going to write after my minus sign is the derivative of the denominator. The denominator is 5t plus 9. The derivative of 5t is 5. The derivative of 9 is 0, and that's all times the numerator, 3t squared plus t minus 2. That's the numerator of my derivative that I'm going to have to clear the parentheses and combine like terms, and then it's all over the denominator squared. I'm going to leave that denominator like that. I'm never going to change that. And now I'm going to multiply out the numerator. I'm going to FOIL this. First are 6t times 5t, which is 30t squared. And then 6t times positive 9 is 54t. And then 1 times 5t 
is plus 5t, and then 1 times plus 9 is plus 9, and then minus 5 times 3t squared is minus 15t squared, minus 5 times positive t is minus 5t, and minus 5 times minus 2 is positive 10, and then all over 5t plus 9 quantity squared. Now I'm going to combine like terms in the numerator. The first like terms are going to be 30t squared minus 15t squared. That's going to give me a positive 15t squared. And then I'm going to combine a positive 54t, a positive 5t, and a negative 5t. The positive 5 and a negative 5t cancel, and that, those three things that I circled leave me with a positive 54t. And lastly, I'm going to combine the positive 10 and the positive 9 and get positive 19. That may factor. I generally don't take the time to try to factor the numerator of a fraction's derivative unless I'm doing more with the derivative than just finding my derivative. So I'm going to call that my answer to problem 24. And so you can make a crack at problem 23. It looks like it has exactly the same level of difficulty. 26 is where I think we really do need to skip. It's a, I've done this on two previous videos. It takes about eight minutes. It's nasty to look at, and it's, I've never put something like that on a test. So we can skip 26. You can skip 25 in the homework. And 27 and 28, if you really wanted to do them, I wouldn't do the problems using the quotient rule. I'll, I'll flash them up on the screen real quickly here. And I'll tell you how you would do 27 if you really were forced to take that derivative. But we can skip 25 and 26. Nothing like it will be on the test. They're exceedingly messy. And you can't avoid the quotient rule. You may also skip 27. I'll skip 28. These aren't really as messy. You can avoid the quotient rule when the denominator of a fraction is a monomial. So if you were really were motivated to try 27, what you would do is you wouldn't use the quotient rule. The quotient rule, when there's um, square roots anywhere in the numerator or the denominator, are real messy. But if a fraction just has a monomial in the denominator, then you can rewrite the problem and get rid of the fraction. So on problem 25 and 26, my denominators had binomials. There, would, there isn't any way to write, rewrite the problem to make it easier to do the derivative without the quotient rule. And so if you were doing problem 27, the best thing you could do is rewrite the problem so that you could use the general power rule and avoid the quotient rule. In order, so I'm rewriting the problem so that I can get rid of the fractions. And in order to simplify this fraction, I'd need an exponent on the x. It has an exponent of 1. And 1 also can be written as 2 halves. I can rewrite this problem as 3x to the 2 halves minus 1 half. And then plus, and I don't know why I'm doing this whole problem, 5x to the negative 1 half. I haven't taken the derivative of problem 27 just yet, but I've got it rewritten in such a way that I can use now the general power rule to take my derivative. And if I was forced to do problem 27 as a homework problem, or if I did problem 28 in my video, this is, I would do all these steps to rewrite the problem so that I can use the general power rule to find the derivative. Quotient rules, which is the rule that we use to take the derivative of fractions, if there's a square root or a cube root anywhere, get really nasty. So if I wanted to do problem 27, now I can take its derivative. I can go y prime is exponent 1 half times the coefficient 3, and then lower the exponent by 1. And in this case, instead of subtracting 1, I'm going to subtract 2 halves. For the second piece, I'm going to take negative 1 half the exponent times the coefficient and then lower the exponent by 1. Because I said I wasn't going to do this problem, I'm going to stop here. It's not that hard to simplify it and write the answer back with positive exponents at this point. But this is how you would approach, uh, this is the easiest way to do the derivative of problem 27. 
there is no easy way to do the derivative of problems 25 and 26 because the denominators have binomials. There's no way to do these derivatives without in using the quotient rule. And I did this on a previous video. It was ridiculously messy, hard to follow, not worth your, your brain matter t at this point. So I will, will completely skip those. If you wanted to go further with that problem 27, you can get a nice answer for it just by continuing with the work. So anytime we have a radical in a fraction, the quotient rule is something I'd never want to do. If there's just a single term and not a plus or minus sign in the denominator, you can avoid the quotient rule by doing a rewrite of the problem so it no longer has a, a fraction, has fraction exponents, but there's not, not a fraction with a numerator and a denominator, and then you can use the general power rule. So that's, you can skip that, so that's completely okay to skip. All right, we have two more problems to do for quotient rules, and these problems have multiplication in the numerator and there's a fraction. What I should probably do for problem 30 is rewrite it before I take the derivative by foiling out my numerator. So my numerator for problem 40 has that multiplication in it. I'm going to go ahead and do that multiplication before I take the derivative. So I'm going to foil this. I'm going to go first, start x times 4x, which is 4x squared. Outers are x times 2, which are plus 2x. Inners are minus 5 times 4x, which is minus 20x. Last are minus 5 times minus 2, which is minus 10. I'm going to combine those like terms, and I'm going to rewrite the numerator as 4x squared minus 18x minus 10. And then all over the quantity, 3x plus 1, all over 3x plus 1 quantity squared. Now I'm going to use the quotient, oh, ugh, idiot, all over 3x plus 1. So I should be writing y equals, I haven't taken a derivative yet, so there's no reason to introduce that square. So all I've done is I've rewritten the problem so that it's a little bit easier to use the quotient rule. Now I'm going to use the quotient rule. The first thing I'm going to write is y prime because I'm taking a derivative. And then I'm going to find the, that derivative and write it first in a parentheses. The derivative of 4x squared is positive 8x. The derivative of minus 18x is minus 18. The derivative of minus 10 is 0. So that's the derivative of the numerator, 8x minus 18. I have to multiply that by the denominator. And then I'm going to go minus denom the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of 3x is positive 3. The derivative of 1 is 0. It doesn't have to be in a parentheses when it's a monomial, but you can put it in a parentheses. But I'm going to leave it outside of, without a parentheses now. So this is derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus derivative of the denominator, then times the numerator all over the denominator squared. That's the derivative. Now I'm just going to clear the parentheses by combining like terms and foiling, foiling combine like terms, and be done. So now I'm going to simplify that numerator like I've been doing. Here I'm going to foil 8x times 3x is 24x squared. Outers, 8x times positive 1 is positive 8x. Inners, minus 18 times 3x is minus 54x. Last, minus 18 times 1 is minus 18. And then next parentheses, minus 3 times 4x squared is minus 12x squared. I'm going to write it right under here to make it easier to simplify, as opposed to after there. And then minus 3 times minus 18x is positive 54x. And then minus 3 times minus 10 is positive 30. That's the numerator multiplied out. And then I need all over the denominator squared. That's kind of probably funky to follow, but that's probably a nicer way to write the numerator while I'm simplifying it because it makes So I'm almost ready for my answer. So I'm going to write my answer by just combining like terms in the numerator. 24x squared minus 12x squared is 12x squared. These 54x's are going to cancel. I'm going to be left with a positive 8x. And minus 18 and positive 30 is going to give me a positive 12 all over 3x plus 1 quantity squared. 
There's certainly a common factor of 4 that you can factor out in the numerator. Again, generally when I find the derivative of a fraction, if all I'm asked to do is find the derivative, I just find the derivative and stop, and I don't take the time to simplify the numerator and factor it. So give 29 a, a crack. I know I did this one a little bit faster, but hopefully you're getting good at doing these derivatives and you're not even watching me do my problems. All right, one more derivative and then we have the last group of problems. So, ugh, how messy. So I'm going to do the same thing for 32 that I did for 30, meaning I'm going to foil out the numerator first. So I'm going to foil out this x squared minus 5 times 4x minus 3. I wrote all these problems. When I wrote this problem, it didn't look as horrible as it's going to be. Let me clear my parentheses in that numerator. I'm going to foil and go first our x squared times 4x, which is 4x cubed. x squared times minus 3 is minus 3x squared. Minus 5 times 4x is minus 20x. Minus 5 times minus 3 is plus 15. No like terms there. So I'm going to rewrite this problem without a y prime because I'm not taking a derivative yet. I'm going to write y equals to 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 20x plus 15. That's the num numerator multiplied out all over x plus 8. Now I'm going to find the derivative, so I'm going to write y prime. I'm going to write an equal sign with a fraction. The first thing I'm going to write is, in, in a parentheses, I'm going to write the derivative of each one of these terms. The derivative of the numerator goes first. The derivative of 4x cubed, I multiply the 3 times 4 and get a 12. I lower the exponent by 1. That derivative, 4x cubed has a derivative of 12x squared. Now I'm going to do the derivative of minus 3x squared by going 2 times minus 3 and getting a minus 6. Lower the exponent by 1 and get minus 6x. The derivative of anything that has an x to the first power is just the coefficient. The derivative of minus 20x is minus 20. And the derivative of that 18, of that 15, is 0 because it's a constant. And then times the denominator. Ugh. And then minus... And the next thing I'm going to write is the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of positive x is just positive 1. The derivative of 8 is 0. So the, the derivative of my denominator is just a me, mere 1. And then times the numerator, 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 20x plus 15. And then all over, I made a double fraction here, which is kind of bad, all over x plus 8 squared. This is a ridiculous to multiply out. I'm not really motivated to multiply out that. So if you can get this far in 31, we're fine. To multiply this out, I'd have to go 12x squared times x, 12x squared times 8, minus 6x times x, minus 6x times 8, minus 20 times x, minus 20 times 8. That's way more multiplying than I need, want to do. This is going to give me six terms when I multiply it out, plus I'll have another four terms here. I'm going to get ten terms, and I might not even have room to write those. So I'm going to say, let's just stop right here. I won't give you a problem like 29, 30, 31, or 32 on the test, but I mean, give, give them a crack anyways, because it's, it's not, they're not ridiculous. All right, so moving into the last group of problems, 33 through 42, and each one of these problems have a part A and a part B. And for each of the problems, I've already found the derivative, which is huge. So when I go to do problem 34A, it says find the slope of a tangent line. I find the slope of a tangent line by taking the derivative and plugging numbers in for x. In this case, I'm told to plug 3 in for x. So the slope of my tangent line I'm going to go 30 times 3 minus 44. So 30 times 3 minus 44, and I get 46. So the slope of a tangent line that I'm looking for is 46. So that's part A of 33. It says find the slope of the tangent line for the given value of x. I already found the derivative, so I just took the value for the derivative, took the value of x and plugged it into the derivative. When you do that, you get a slope of a tangent line. 
Part B says find an equation of a tangent line. And to find an equation of a tangent line, you need both a point and a slope. Well, the slope I just figured out in part A, it's m equal to 46. I'm given the x-coordinate of the point, but I'm not given a y-coordinate of the point. But heck, it's, I can find the y-coordinate of the point real easily. I find a y-coordinate of a point if I have an x by taking that number and plugging it in to the original function for the x's in the original function. So I'm going to get the y value of the point by taking the value 3 plugging it in for each of the x's, and then I'm just going to use my calculator because I don't want to deal with this. So I'm going to go 3 times 3 minus 4 parentheses and then parentheses 5 times 3 minus 8. And the point that I'm going to have is going to have a y-coordinate of 35. So what I've created is a point and a slope. And to find an equation for a line, if I have a point and a slope, I'm just going to use the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So each of the next few problems, all I'm going to do is, in part a, take the value of x and plug it into the derivative that I already calculated. In part b, I'm going to take the value of x and plug it into the original function to get the y-coordinate of the point. Then I will have a full point and a slope, and I'm going to use the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 formula to get the equation for the line. But of course, I need to clear the parentheses and solve for y. And then I'm afraid at this point that I can't do 46 times 3, and 46 times 3 is 138. I'm almost done with part b. Just going to add 35 to both sides, and I'm going to get my answer to 35b. 34b, which is going to be y equals 46x, and then minus 138 plus 35 is minus 103. So the equation of the tangent line that I need, so this is for 34b, that's its answer. I'm not going to graph this because the numbers are so big, it's going to be hard to see anything that's valuable on my graph. So for 34a, the slope of the tangent line is 46. The equation of the tangent line is y equals 46x minus 103. You should be able to do something similar for 33. And hopefully, you've already calculated this derivative, and you had it written down so you don't have to redo finding the derivative. And each of the problems I'm doing between 33 and 42, when I pull the problem up, you're going to see the derivative because I've already found the derivative, and I didn't want to do the computations again. So for part A, I need the slope of my tangent line at the given value of x. This should really say t equal, because the function has t's, but hardly matters. And so the slope of my tangent line at t equal negative 2, I'm going to go g prime of negative 2 equals 18 times negative 2 squared plus 26 times negative 2 plus 5. I hardly care to do that by hand. So if to do that, I'm going to go 18 and then parentheses negative 2 parentheses squared plus 26 parentheses negative 2 plus 5. Assuming I enter this right on my calculator, the slope of the tangent line, so my answer to 36a is the slope of the tangent line equals 25. For 36b, I need to find an equation of a line which needs a point and a slope. The slope's going to be 25. The x-coordinate of my point's going to be negative 2. And to get the y-coordinate, I need to plug negative 2 in for all those t's. So I'm going to do this just in my on my calculator. I'm going to take each one of these t's and make it a negative 2. So I'm going to go parentheses 3, then parentheses negative 2 squared, plus 5 parentheses negative 2 parentheses. So that's the first 3t squared plus 5t, changing the t to a negative 2. And I put the negative 2's in parentheses. 
Now I'm moving on to the 2t plus 1 parentheses. I'm going to go parentheses 2, then parentheses negative 2, plus 1, close my parentheses. So that's the entire second parentheses, and I get negative 6 when I do that. So the y-coordinate of the point I have is going to be negative 6. So now I have a point and a slope. I'm going to use the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 formula to get my answer. So I'm going to go y minus a negative 6 equals 25 times x minus a negative 2. I have two sets of double negatives that I'm going to turn positive. So I'm going to write this as y plus 6 equals to 25 times x plus 2. Now I'm going to clear the parentheses. That's going to give me y plus 6 equals 25 times x is 25x. 25 times 2 is 50. And then I just minus 6 from both sides. And that will get me to my answer for problem 36. B. So if the answer for 36b, the equation of the tangent line that I'm asked to find, is going to be y, you can't see it, it's going to be y equals 25x plus 44. So you should be able to do something spot on the same for problem 35. Again, you're going to already computed this derivative. Hopefully you have it written down handy so you can just plug the number into the derivative without having to find the derivative and then do exactly what I did and you'll be okay. Alright, so, oh, lovely. So problem 38, part A, to find the slope of the tangent line at the given value of x. The given value of x is 1, the derivative is there, so I'm going to go y prime evaluated at 1, right, that's kind of funky notation, but that's what I'm doing, is going to be 60 times 1 to the fourth plus 112 times 1 cubed minus 60 times 1 squared. Don't really even need to enter the 1's. The answer is going to be 112, but let me do it anyways. 60 times 1 up arrow 4 plus 112 times 1 up arrow 3 minus 60 times 1 up arrow 2. That's that line, and I get 112. So the slope of my tangent line, the answer to part a of 38, slope of the tangent line is m equals 112. 38b, I need to find an equation of a tangent line because the instructions say find the equation of the tangent line at the given value of x. I know that the slope is 112. I know that the x coordinate of my point is 1. I'm going to plug a 1 in for all those x's on my calculator to get the y coordinate. So now I'm getting the y-coordinate of my point by going 4, then parentheses, 1, up arrow, 3. That's the 4 times x cubed. And then parentheses, and then 3 parentheses, 1 squared, plus 7 parentheses, 1 for the time 7x minus 5. And so that's the, the parentheses part of this. So this is exactly what you need to enter. That's just changing the three x's in the problem to a one inside of parentheses. And the reason one is because that's the number that's given there. And that's the y-coordinate of my point. The y-coordinate of my point is 20. And now I'm going to find the equation of a line. I'm going to go y minus y1, which is y minus 20, equals m 112 times x minus x1. That's going to give me y minus 20 equals 112x minus 112 when I clear that parentheses by multiplying 112 times x and 112 times minus 1. I add 20 to both sides and negative 112 plus 20 gives me negative 92. So for my answer to 38b, the equation of the tangent line is going to be y on the left side and then 112x minus 92 on the right side. So you, hopefully you're not even need to watch all of these and you just went through all the problems without my doing them for you. That would be great. Ugh. The next two are really unpleasant because of the fraction part. So for 40a, the slope of my tangent line, I need to take the derivative and plug in the given number. The given value of x is 2. It's 
is going to be a little bit, bit of a challenge to enter. Let me try to do this so you can see it. So I'm going to go 89 divided by parentheses, 3 parentheses, 2 plus 11 parentheses squared. I'm probably going to get a decimal. I'm going to math enter enter to make it into a fraction. So, oh my gosh. So the slope of the tangent line is m equals 89 over 2, 89. I'm going to use my calculator a lot on this problem. So that's the answer to part 40a. Now I'm going to move on to part 40b. I need a point and a slope. The slope is 89 over 289. The x coordinate of the point is 2. Now I'm going to get the y coordinate of the point by plugging in 2 for each of these x's. So I'm going to do this like this. I'm going to go numerator in a parentheses, 7 parentheses, 2 minus 4, close out my parentheses. The entire numerator needs to be in a parentheses. And then divide it by, and then the entire denominator needs to be in a parentheses. 3 parentheses, 2 plus 11. And then math, enter, enter. The y coordinate of my point is 10 over 17. Ooh. So now I have a point and a slope, and I'm going to do the equation of my line by going y minus y1, which is y minus 10 over 17, equals m, 89 over 289, times x minus x1, which is x minus 2. All right, so I need to go and clear the parentheses on the right side. And I'm going to be lazy and do it on my calculator. So I'm going to do that multiplication. I get 89 over 289 times x minus, and I'm going to go 89 over 289 times 2. So parentheses, 89 divided by 289 times 2 equals math, enter, enter. I get 178 over 289. That goes after my minus sign. And now I'm going to add 10 over 17 to both sides. On the left side, I'm going to get y. On the right side, I have 89 over 289x. And then it's probably going to be a minus. Let me do this on my calculator, too. So minus 178 divided by 289 plus 10 divided by 17 equals math. Enter, enter, is negative 8 over 289. Would not do that without a calculator, because it's silly. Calculator does fractions well enough, I might as well exploit its abilities. So I didn't do much work it by hand. I'm exploiting my calculator when, when the algebra gets grungier than I want to do by hand. So give 39 a go. We only have one more problem to do. And it's going to be equally bad, maybe even a little bit worse. So 42a, I need the slope of my tangent line. So I need to go y prime evaluated at the value of x that's given. That's negative 4. That's going to be negative 72 over 3 times negative 4 minus 6 quantity squared. I don't care to do that by hand. So now negative 72. Here the numerator, because it's a monomial, it doesn't have to be in a parentheses, but it wouldn't be wrong to have it in a parentheses. And then divided by parentheses, three parentheses, negative 4 minus 6 squared, enter, math, enter, enter. That's not such a bad number. So I'm going to get the answer for part A, the slope of the tangent line, is negative 2 over 9. For 42b, I need a point and a slope. The slope is going to be m equals negative 2 over 9. The x coordinate of my point is going to be negative 4. And to get the y coordinate, I'm going to go to this function and change the x's to negative 4. Uh, the numerator, because it's a monomial, doesn't have to be in a parentheses. So I'm going to plug negative 4 in. I'm going to go 12 parentheses negative 4 for my numerator and then divide it by the denominator because it's a binomial it has to be in a parenthesis so I go parenthesis 3 parenthesis 4 
minus 6, close out the parentheses, equals, and then math, enter, enter, and I get 8 over 3 for the y coordinate of my point. So plugging a number into the derivative gives you the slope. Plugging a number into the original function gives you the y coordinate of a point. And now y minus y1, which is y minus 8 thirds, equals m, which is minus 2 ninths. And then for the x minus a negative 4, that double negative is going to go positive. I'm going to write this as x plus 4 rather than writing x minus negative 4 and taking up an extra line. So now I'm going to have y minus 8 thirds on the left side still. Negative 2 ninths times x is negative 2 ninths x. And then negative 2 ninths times 4 is negative 8 ninths. But let me just do that on my calculator. So negative 2 divided by 9 in the parentheses times 4. And then math, enter, enter, and you get negative 8 over 9. So on the left side, I stuck with the y minus 8 thirds. And on the right side, I have the negative 2 ninths x minus 8 ninths. I'm going to add 8 thirds to both sides. That's going to give me eventually the answer of y on the left side, negative 2 ninths x on the left side. I think it's going to be plus something. But I'm going to do the minus 8 ninths plus 8 thirds. And so minus 8 divided by 9 plus 8 divided by 3. And math, enter, enter, plus 16 ninths. So my answer to problem 42b, the equation of my tangent line, is going to be y equals negative 2 ninths x plus 16 ninths. So these problems were a lot quicker to do because I already had the derivative done. If you didn't have, if you had to redo the derivative because you didn't write down what the derivative was, then they're going to be a little bit ridiculous. All right, so that's the end of section 2.2. We have another rule to learn in section 2.3. That's oh, I don't know if it's messier, but it's kind of messy. So get these rules, the rules in sections 2.1 and 2.2 do perfected before you move on to 2.3, because you'll have to know all these rules to be, to be able to do every problem in the next section.